Today's lesson is going to be on the ruler. Now rulers come in many shapes and sizes. You have your basic straight ruler that you've used in school, tape measures, if I could figure this one out, used on a prize printer, yardsticks, all of them involve being able to read a ruler. And if you're going to be working in any hands-on trade or anything where you have to deal with measurement, you've got to know how to read a ruler. So let's talk about this for a minute. Now rulers, if you take a look at my large ruler here, have increments that show off all the inches. Obviously this is a giant ruler, but you have inches, and then there are 12 inches in a foot, 36 inches in a yard, or three feet in a yard. Most people understand that concept, but it's when you get down to the breaking up the inch into fractions of an inch that people have problems. So that's really what we're going to be taking a look at. So let's think about measurement for a second. And what we're measuring is a distance. How far is it from the end of the ruler to a particular point on the ruler? And that's what we're looking at. So what we're doing is we're breaking up the inch. Now we're going to talk about this in terms of something else that you're probably more familiar with. A Hershey bar. Now, Hershey bars are nice. And they are broken up at different sizes. Let me get my other one here. I have it over already. There we go. My backup Hershey bar. Hershey bars, when you take them out, have little lines in them. That's so you can break them into pieces. Now, if I was having this Hershey bar and I wanted to share it with my friend, I might break the Hershey bar down the middle and make two equal pieces of it. I would be giving my friend how much if I gave him this piece? I would be giving him half of the Hershey bar. I would get a half. How many halves are there in the whole Hershey bar? There are two. Right? So how do you write a half? You can write it out as a word, or you can write it out as a fraction. So if I was to write one half, I would write it that way. Okay? Now I've drawn a Hershey bar up on the board here. So basically what I just did is I cut my Hershey bar in half. Right? I have my two halves of my Hershey bar here. Right? That was just broken half. Halves for my friend, halves for me. Okay? And you would write it this way. Now when you look at a fraction, let's talk about a fraction for a second. Fractions have two parts, a number on the top and a number on the bottom. And the numerator and the denominator. Who cares what they really call them, but that's what they are. Anyway. The bottom number is telling you how many pieces there are in one. My Hershey bar, which was originally one piece, I broke it. Now I'm, I've taken and broken it into two halves, two pieces. So I, the bottom number tells me how many pieces there are in one whole Hershey bar in this case. The top number tells you how much you're looking at. If I got one half, that means I've got one of those two halves. Okay. Now what if I took the Hershey bar? And I broke it in half again. Two of my buddies came along. Oh, everybody wants a piece of the chocolate bar. So we're going to break each of those halves now in half. So I have four pieces, right? So it's hard to hold here, so we'll draw it on the board. Breaking my Hershey bar now into four pieces. Each one of those pieces is called one fourth because. I'm looking at one of the four pieces. All right, so I've now broken my Hershey bar into four pieces, or it's fourths. Now, halves and fourths are funny because, like for an example, a fourth, you can also say one quarter. All right? One quarter and one fourth mean the same thing. Right? Um, half, right? We say one half, but we don't say one tooth. That would be weird. I guess we could have, but nobody ever did that. But they do say one quarter or one fourth. One fourth and one tooth would be the same thing. But we don't say that. That's kind of silly. But we do say one half. But you will see for a quarter the term a fourth being used means the same thing because there's four pieces. And then as we break it into more pieces, that bottom number, like if you break the four in half again, now how many pieces have I got? 
Well, I've got eight pieces. So I've broken it into eighths. And if I'm looking at one piece, I've got one eighth. Now my candy bar isn't broken vertically like that, but if it was, I could break it again. But um, that's how that would go. Now, if I had, let's say, I took three of those pieces, I would have three eighths because each one is an eighth. All right, so that's where these fractions come to. The bottom number is telling you how many pieces you've broken it into, and the top number is telling you how many you're looking at. All right, now it works the same with an inch. Instead of a candy bar, you're talking about inches. I can take and break my inch up the same way. So let's break it up. That's pretty cool, huh? I took my inch, separated it out from the rest of my ruler, because this repeats for every inch, so we just need to know one. So, if I cut my inch in half, like I did with my candy bar at first, I have two halves. That's two halves of an inch. So this line in the middle is the half inch line. Notice it's biggest. They do that on purpose so it's easy to spot. So I can spot that half inch line from without counting any lines. That sticks up the most. All right? So that's a half. That's a half. And that's a half. Together I have two halves. Any number over itself becomes one. All right? So if I had two halves, let's write it over here. Two halves, two over two is one, right? And two halves put together makes one inch. Okay? So that's halves. Then, just like I did with my candy bar, if I break halves in half, I get fourths. And again, if you look at just a half inch, that taller line there, that's, that's my fourths or my quarters. So here I've broken up the inch into four even chunks. Those are fourths or quarters. So that's a fourth, that's a fourth, that's a fourth, and that's a fourth. I've got four of them. If I went measured from here to here, I'm looking at three of the four fourths. One, two, three. So this line right here is three fourths of an inch. Right now you can't pull your ruler apart, but they make the lines in such a way so that it's easy to kind of visualize it. You can see that the tallest line is a half inch, and the next shortest one are the fourths. So here's a fourth. Now notice something. Let's break it back apart again. Here's fourths, right? Two fourths is the same as one half, right? Here's two fourths, that's half of the inch. Here's two more fourths, that's the other half of the inch. So two fourths is the same as one half. And if you go back to your math class, <coughs> excuse me, two fourths, if I was to reduce that, is the same as one half, and that's why. Because two of those fourths on my ruler here equals one half of an inch, or of a candy bar, or of anything else for that matter. Let's continue. If I break my fourths in half, I'm taking each fourth now and dividing it in half. I've got four pieces. If I chop each one in half, I'm going to end up with eight pieces. So that makes eighths. I have enough room here on my ruler. Yeah, that's better. So here's eights. How many pieces do I have? I have eight. That's why we call them eights. All right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eights. All right? If I measured along my ruler and got to the three of them, there's my three eights, just like I did on the board with the candy bar. So that's one eighth, two eighths, three eighths. If I went to here, well, that would be one, two, three, four, five eighths. Okay? So it's just a matter of counting along. Now, some of them have two names. For example, how many eighths are there at the half inch mark? Well, there's one, two, three, four of them. So four eighths and one half are the same thing. Right? How many eighths are there at the quarter mark? Well, there's two of them. One, two, because remember we took quarters and divided them in half, so there's obviously two, two eighths for every quarter and etc. All right, so you can see that all the way along the way. And of course, if I break the eighths in half, I'm going to end up with sixteenths. I'm going to need to rule it really long for this one. Okay. 
Okay, so here's sixteenths. So I have chopped everything in half. My eighths are now cut into two pieces, so if every eighth becomes double, it becomes sixteenths. So now I've got sixteen pieces. Now that's really confusing to look at this way, but it just illustrates how that all breaks down. If I want to know what is the distance to here, I really am not looking at the lines. I want to know how far is it from here to here? How much of the inch am I looking at? Well, I'm looking at one, two, three, four, six, seven sixteenths. Because that's how far along the ruler I've gone. All right now, if, if, if all the lines are the same size or spaced out evenly like this, it would be really hard to read a ruler. So, what they do, like I was saying before, is they make the lines shorter for every increment. All right, so it makes it easier to spot. All right, I'm going to come over here on the board. Let me erase this real quick and draw an inch up here. Let's see how well this erases. This is my makeshift whiteboard because we're having the coronavirus right now and we can't be at school. So, make do. Okay, so start fresh. Let's dry this off good so that it works. And we're going to draw a ruler up here. I hope. Let's see if this works. So let's say this is the beginning of a ruler. It's not like writing on a wet piece of plastic laminate here, but it'll work. Okay, so let's say this is an inch. We'll, we'll just stretch this out a little bit. So right here is going to be our one inch mark. same thing we were just doing on there, because I want to show you a few things. So, if we chop it in half, that's our one half mark. And we're going to switch to different color for this one. Just complaining. Okay. That's better. So, here's our inch, the longest line. Here's our half inch, just a little bit shorter. Right? Here's a half, here's a half, pretty easy to see. Again, if I chop the halves in half, I get fourths. Now again, remember that you're not trying to figure out what the line is, you're talking about how big is the space. That's one fourth from here ending at that line. So that's a fourth. Well to here, how many fourths is that? That's two fourths or a half. What's this line? Well. What that line is, represents is the end of this distance starting from here. So how many fourths do I have so far? One, two, three fourths. And of course, from here to here would be four fourths or a whole inch. One, two, three, four. Like we just talked about. If I divide the fourths in half, I go to eighths. We'll just do this part quickly here. Here are eighths. And then if I divide my eighths in half, those are sixteenths. I'll draw those lines a little shorter. So here's sixteenths. And if you count all these spaces, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So we call it sixteenths, right? Now, we need a way to read this ruler reasonably quickly. Because if I'm on a job and I'm doing carpentry and the person up on the side of the building says, cut me a piece of siding that's fifteen and eleven sixteenths long. I gotta find 11 16, so I gotta get my little ruler out and stop counting these lines. And of course, this is gonna be a lot smaller. I've drawn this a lot bigger. So I can't start at the beginning and try to count all the way over at 11. I might lose count along the way and end up with a wrong measurement. I need to figure out how I can get there quickly. So here's a little system you can use, and I call them anchor points. You can usually find a half and a quarter and three quarters without counting lines because they stick up the most, they're easy to spot. So here's a half, here's a quarter, here's three quarters, even if those weren't there you could easily find those. If I know what these measurements are in eighths and sixteenths, I can go either way, either an eighth or a sixteenth, to find my number. All right, so let's look at eighths first. All right, if I divide this into eighths, now this ruler right now is in sixteenths. So every two sixteenths is an eighth. So this is an eighth from here to here, right? So that's an eighth of an inch from there to there. From there to there is another eighth. So if I count every two lines, I will get eighths. Okay. 
By the way, the first thing you want to do when you pick up a ruler is figure out what it's broken into. The easiest way to do that is to count the lines in an inch, right? Like I just did before. But that's time consuming. But I can spot the half inch mark and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I, at the half inch mark, I've got eight. I know I've got another eight. So I can really, I really only have to count half the ruler. And if I'm really smart, I know where a quarter is. One, two, three, four. Well, that's four. So this must be eight. Oh yeah, this is this ruler's in sixteenths. So you can use that to kind of speed up your counting. But once you figure out what your ruler is, and sometimes, by the way, they'll give you a little hint. They'll up in the corner, they'll write it. 16 if it's in 16, so an 8 if they're in 8. Usually they're 8 or 16. If they're really hard to read, it's probably 30 seconds or 64. But 16 are the most common, so let's go with that. So back to what we were doing. So if I need to find a measurement, I want to find these anchor points. I'm going to call them anchor points because you can find them without counting lines in eighths. So how many eighths in a quarter? Well, here's one, here's another one. So I have two eighths. How many in a half inch? Here's one, two, three, four eighths, three quarters, five, six eighths, and an inch is going to be eight eighths. Now the inch is the easiest because it's what the one number over itself. Eight eighths is always going to be an inch, right? And then in sixteenths, how big is a quarter? That's in sixteenths. Well, I've got one, two, three, four sixteenths and a quarter. Five, six, seven, eight sixteenths at the half inch mark. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve sixteenths at the three quarter mark, and of course sixteen sixteenths. If I can write that clearly at the inch mark. So again, these are my anchor points: quarter, half, three quarters, and an inch. So. If I wanted to find 7 sixteenths, I look for, in my sixteenths row here, what number is closest to 7? Well, 8 sixteenths is half. So if I go to the half inch mark and go backwards 1 sixteenth, I'm at 7 sixteenths. If I need 11 sixteenths, like I was mentioning before, oh geez, where's 11 sixteenths? Oh, well, 12 sixteenths, whoops, this should be 16. 12 sixteenths is 3 quarters, so if that's 12, go back 1, that's 11. Where's 13 sixteenths? Well, go forward from 12 sixteenths, 1. And that would be 13 sixteenths. You can do the same thing with eighths. If I need 3 eighths, well, quarter of an inch is 2 eighths. Go an eighth more. Now, an eighth is 2 sixteenths, so I have to count two lines. So there's 3 eighths, right? Because a fourth is 2 eighths. There's 3 eighths. Or I could have gone back from a half inch back an eighth, from 4 eighths back to 3 eighths. If you know a quarter, a half, and three quarters, and an inch, in eighths and sixteenths, you will be able to find any measurement by counting one increment. All right. Now, here's a couple of things to remember. The half inch are easy to remember because the top number is half of the bottom. So four eighths. Four is half of eight. Eight sixteenths is a half inch. Eight is half of sixteen. All right. A quarter is usually pretty easy. Two eighths or four sixteenths. The hardest one that seems to be to remember is 3 fourths, 6 eighths, or 12 sixteenths. An inch is easy. The same number over itself, 8 eighths or 16 sixteenths, that's a whole inch. So if I say find 15 sixteenths, here's 16 sixteenths, there's 15 sixteenths. Is that if I said find 7 eighths, well, here's 8 eighths. I'm going to go back an eighth, there's 7 eighths. All right? So what you need to do is memorize these. Really, you just need to memorize the three. The inch is really easy. And the half inch is pretty easy, too. Four eighths or eight sixteenths. So if you really, you have, the only thing you have to memorize is quarters and three quarters, you can find any measurement by counting one increment, one way or the other. All right? So you've got quarter, half, three quarters, which is two eighths, four eighths, or six eighths. And in sixteenths, it would be four sixteenths, eight sixteenths, and twelve sixteenths. You should be able to find any measurement by going one increment one way or the other. You just have to remember that there's two sixteenths in an eighth. So if you're looking at eighths and you've got a sixteenth inch increment ruler, you've got to count two increments at a time for eighths. And that should help you speed your, your um, ruler reading along. If you know how to read a ruler already, this should help you be more accurate and faster. Because if I had to find thirteen sixteenths and I had to count 
from here all the way to 13, that would be tough. But I know 13 sixteenths is 1 16th past 3 quarters. I only have one line to count because I can spot 3 quarters. So it makes you more accurate and it makes you quicker. And if you're on the job, time is money. Speed is important along with accuracy. In the next video, we're going to be talking a little bit about dealing with fractions because sometimes I have to add some things together. If I've got two pieces of wood that are 3 quarters of an inch thick and I've got to glue them together, how thick is the whole thing going to be? Maybe I need a screw to go into those two pieces without coming out the other side. So I've got to be able to figure out some basic math with fractions. But reading a ruler, memorize those three or four anchor points and you're golden. Thank you.